Welcome to Opens Here. My name is Greg Horn, and I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. Yesterday we started uh, talking about the season of Christmas and I shared a couple of passages, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. And then I shared Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, where over 400 years before Jesus was born, it was predicted, for a child will be born to us, a son is given to us, the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. I want to encourage you, if you missed yesterday's program, to go check that out. Uh, only 14 minutes long. Go to our website, hopeishere.today. That's hopeishere.today. And uh, check that out. And I, I read the passage also of Luke chapter 2, verses 18, 8 through 14 verses 8 through 14 in chapter 2 of Luke and uh, it's my favorite uh, Christmas story from the Bible the part that announces Jesus birth and uh, I want to share it with you again today Uh, and there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby keeping watch over their flocks at night an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified but the angel said to them do not be afraid I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in Bethlehem, the city of David, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel praising God and saying glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 14 that's uh, my favorite part about uh, the Bible as far as announcing the birth of Jesus and yesterday I shared two takeaways I'm going to share four new ones with you the first one i talked about was an angel of the lord appeared and asked the question when have you seen something that only god can do and then the second takeaway i share with you from this passage of luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 14 is i said we do not have to be afraid this christmas season i hope you'll go back if you missed though uh, yesterday's program listen to the podcast at hope is here dot today the third thing that kind of spoke to me as I've read this and preparing for our program is the news of Jesus' birth was for everyone. Man, I love that in verse 10 where it says that. Do not be afraid. I'll bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Didn't say for the rich people, for the white people, the tall, skinny people with hair. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on of how we would, if we were in charge, probably say this is who God's one and only son is going to appear before. And the Savior will be just for the religious people or for the people that live in this neighborhood or drive this kind of car or have a high school and college education or a doctorate degree. No, it simply said that this news of great joy will be for all the people. I love that. Not just some people, not most people, but for all the people. That means you, if you're listening today, you thinking, has God forgot me? Where is he? I want to remind you, because of this birth of his one and only son, Jesus Christ, today on December 25th, 2018, that the news of Jesus' birth was for everyone. Friends, that's good news. That is good news. Another takeaway that I had from this passage of Scripture here in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14 is we need a Savior. We all need a Savior. It says, Today in Bethlehem, the city of David, the Savior. Yes, the Messiah has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Friends, they were expecting a Savior in the Old Testament. Like I said, this was predicted 400 years before it happened in Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, because I know a lot of you are very analytical and uh, you're intellectual, and that's how you learn, and that's why I love the Bible. It's not just a warm, fuzzy book. It also has great historical facts, and 
a lot of things that are just amazing uh, that tie together from the Old Testament to the New Testament and uh, just to challenge you to read the Bible. Maybe um, your faith has kind of wavered a little bit because this year has been really hard on you. But the Bible tells us that God's word will not return void if you read it. And I love that it tells us that in Bethlehem, the city of David, the Savior was born. And friends, maybe some of you are just worn out today because you've been trying to save yourself. Uh, you feel like you're drowning, and I, I get it. Life can be so, so hard and draining in this time of year, just emotionally, mentally, physically worn out. Yet the good news is that Jesus sent a Savior, so we don't have to do that. And it's so hard because it's it, it's by surrender that you actually get strength. Especially as a man, when I think about surrender, I think about boxers and boxing matches. And finally, uh, you know, maybe their manager in the corner waves a white flag. It's like, no, we're done. You know, my boxer's done. He can't go anymore. But you know what? Surrender, when you surrender your one only life to Jesus, man, there's strength in that. Tremendous strength. And we all need a Savior. Fact of the matter is, I heard a pastor say many years ago, that you know if we could save ourselves we could all uh, Jesus just would have sent us a $25 gift card to Barnes and Noble and would have said hey or Joseph Beth and said hey go get yourself a, a self help book in the self help section and get a latte and have a, li a nice life but no friends he sent his one and only son Jesus Christ to be our savior because we needed to be saved for, from ourselves and those of you that have ever struggled with addiction, you know, sometimes you just have to be saved from yourself. And I'm thankful that Jesus, God loved us so much that through Jesus we could have a Savior. And you know what? That never gets old to me. It really doesn't. It never gets old to think about how much the baby Jesus loves me. And the thing about it, so many times we doubt, you know, does God really love me? Does he really care? And, you know, I want to ask you, my fifth takeaway out of this passage in Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14 is, what is your sign that God loves you? What is your sign that God loves you? I mean, he sent a precious baby. To me, that's a huge sign in itself. But, you know, some of you need other signs. I had a friend sharing with me the other day, said she was praying and really hard for this person that she knew was going through a lot of time, a hard time, and just lifting them up in prayer and said, you know, I just need to, God know that you hear my prayers and that you're working. I've been praying for this person in this situation for quite a while. And she said, you know, she even had tears in her eyes because she was praying so hard for this friend that she knew was going through a, a tough situation that day. Could be a great opportunity, but also it was a tough situation. And she said, literally, uh, when she got done saying, God, I just need you to show me a sign that uh, you hear my prayers and that you're going to help this person in this situation. And she said, amen. And then she heard a ding on her phone, and she went over and checked it. And it was a text from this person just saying, hey, uh, things have gone better than expected. Thank you so much for your prayers. It was actually things went really, really well. And um it was not a challenging situation at all. So thank you for your, your your prayers. She said, wow, that was just so encouraging me to get a sign from God like that to let me know that he is still on the throne and that he cares. And, you know, we look at for signs all the time, but a lot of times we're so busy we can't notice them. And yet the thing that I know that I know is that Jesus wants to give you signs. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. You have not because you ask not. It's another Bible verse. And I just know that some of you right now are just like wondering, where is God? And I want you to know today that God has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten you. My final takeaway from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14, that announced the birth of God's one and only Son, Jesus Christ, is give God the glory with your one and only life this Christmas season. And know that Jesus will bring you glory. He will bring you peace. And I get that out of the last verse there that talks about, you know, glory to God in the highest heaven. 
and peace on earth to those whom God has pleased. When God brings brought Jesus and said glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those whom God has pleased, friends, God's not looking for perfection. He wants to bring you peace. He wants to bring you peace. That's why he sent his one and only son, Jesus, so that we can have peace after we surrender our one and only lives to him. And it says, and peace on earth to those to whom God is pleased. Not perfected, not looking for perfection. Doesn't say, and peace to those who are perfect. It says, to whom God is pleased. And some of us think, well, God can't love me right now. I'm struggling with this area of my life. And friends, I got news for you. We're all struggling with something. I don't say it to be mean or insensitive, but I just want to let you know that lie that you're um, believing, that you're the only one that suffers with this. Uh, as I've gotten older friends, and especially as I've done this program the past year with Hope is Here, I found out, I find out every week doing this program that the more different I think we are, actually the more alike we are, and that we all have different struggles but there's also many many others that have gone through similar struggles but the enemy lies to us makes us think no your life's not fair because we play that compare game and we compare our situation to somebody else you know it's not fair that my dad died earlier it's not fair that i have to take care of this situation a parent a relative it's holding me back it's not fair i didn't get that promotion at work it's not fair that i don't have kids it's not fair that I don't make as much money as my siblings. I mean, the list goes on and on, friends, and we play play the compare game. You're not going to have peace in your life. I know that from many years of experience and from mistakes I've made. And for some of you this Christmas day today, just be thankful and count your blessings and don't compare your, your one and only life to somebody else's. I promise you, there are many people that would trade places with you. There's always somebody that has it better than you, but there's always somebody that has it worse. And my dad told me a lot of times, he's like, son, uh, you know what? You need to leave your measuring stick at home. Just go enjoy yourself. Some of you this Christmas holiday, this Christmas season, you need to leave your measuring stick at home. You just need to go enjoy yourself. And just thank God for the many blessings. And you may be spending Christmas alone. You're not alone. Jesus is with you. In fact, because when Jesus died, he said, I'm going to leave a counselor behind with you, the Holy Spirit. And so you actually have the Trinity. Those of you who have been in faith for a long time know what that is. But if you're checking out this Jesus thing, and if you're a follower of Jesus, you get three for one. You get the, the Father, which is God, the Son, which is Jesus, and then the counselor, the Holy Spirit, which sets up inside our hearts there and um, just kind of helps guide us and direct us and let us know what we need to do with our one and only lives. Well, I close today in my talk here over the past days about the season of Christmas. I love that it talked about there in uh, verse 12 that today in Bethlehem, the city of David, the Savior, yes, the Messiah has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. And friends, the fact of the matter is, I think that God knew that our lives at some times, at lots of times, would be a mess. And that's why he sent a Messiah, because he knew we needed somebody to help us clean up the mess. So as you worship King Baby Jesus today, I hope that you know that that king that came in the form of a baby named Jesus, that he will help you and give you hope, not just during this Christmas season, but going into the new year in 2019. I'm Greg Horn, and this is Hope is Here. Would you please consider making a year-end donation to Hope is Here Ministries? You can donate online at hopeishere.today. That's hopeishere.today. Or you can mail a check to Hope is Here Ministries at 941 Girardi Road, Lexington, Kentucky, 40509. For more information, visit them online at hopeishere.today. All donations are tax deductible and help keep this ministry on the air. Thank you for considering Hope is Here as part of your year-end giving. We hope that you have a Merry Christmas.